Hello everyone. I'm Snigtha Agrawal this side. I'm here to present my paper, Study of 2D Feature Extraction Technique for Classification of Spinocerebral Ataxia Type 12. This is an immunological disorder which is caused by the dysfunction of cerebellum and spinal cord and it has a unique prevalence in North Indian population. On the right side of the slides, you slide, you can see these different symptoms which can be found in this disease. Clinical diagnosis of this disease can be carried out using the ataxia rating scales and genetic test. Ataxia rating scales is basically a questionnaire where the doctor asks the patient about different uh, problems which they face and a rating has been rating start is given. Genetic testing is a blood test which confirms the presence of ataxia in the patient. These clinical tests are subjective in nature and require significant amount of time. These tests tell only about the severity of the disease, but not which uh, not uh, tell us. They don't tell us about which part of the brain has been affected. So, in order to see that, structural MRI is being used as a uh, most preferred neuroimaging technique. In literature, several neuronal losses have been reported in cerebral hemispheres, vermis, midbrain, etc. But there's a lack of thorough quantitative analysis of degeneration patterns for different subtypes of SC. Limited work in, has been done in neuroimaging for SC12. The uh, clinical di uh, diagnosis of the disease through genetic testing and manual analysis of MRI scan makes the whole process long, cumbersome, and susceptible to human error. While machine learning has been applied to SCA2, 3, and 6, but according to our knowledge, no work has been done in SCA12 up to date. To overcome the problem of manual assessment, there is a need to build machine learning model to distinguish SCA12 from controls using structural MRI. Here in the work, we have investigated four different statistical and texture-based feature extraction methods to determine the strength in distinguishing SCA12 patients from the control. The study will help to find relevant features for an effective decision model for computer-rated diagnosis. The proposed model has involves four phases, data collection and pre-processing, feature extraction, feature selection, and classification. Data collection. For data collection, subjects were recruited from a neurological, neurologic clinic of a referral hospital. The severity of the disease was recorded with the help of ICARA score and the CAG repeats found in genetic testing. The demographic details of the patients and the controls used in the study are given below. For data pre-processing, each of the anatomical image, uh, for each of the anatomical image, DICOM format was converted to 3D nuclear format using MRI cron. Each of these Steven volumes were then manually reoriented using SPM12 software to set the origin along the ACPC line. After manual reorientation, all the images were pre processed using the expert mode in CAT12 toolbox. The T1 uh, uh, images were normalized to MNI space and were segmented into gray matter, white matter, and CSR. Feature extraction step. This is a method that combines the variables into a set of features, effectively reducing the amount of data that must be processed while still accurately and completely describing the original data. This helps to overcome the problem of overfit. In this step, we have explored the four different statistical and textural feature extraction methods. First one is first order statistics. In first order statistics, we have used mean, median, mode, standard deviation, kurtosis, skewness, and mean or average deviation. Formulas can be found in appendix one. Now, we have employed this, uh, these statistics on each of the 2D slides of the subject's brain volume individually to obtain seven features. The features so obtained were averaged from all the slices to form a feature vector for each measure. Each of these measures is then concatenated to represent the volume. The next method is GLCM or gray level cooperance matrix. This captures the second order statistics. Here also, 
the 2D GLCM is employed in each slice of the brain individually to obtain certain features for each of the four directions. The mean and range are then computed from the four directions, which are uh, concatenated to form the one event. We have used three different gray levels here, 8, 16, and 32. The next method, GLGCM, or gray level gradient coherence matrix, is also uh, a variant of coherence matrix that focuses on capturing second order stars. Here, the only difference is that we first calculate the image gradient of the 2D slice and then apply the GLC feature extraction method, which was described in the previous slide. Here also, we have used three different gray levels, 8, 16, and 32. The last but not the least method, GLRLM, or gray level run length matrix, is used. Here it captures the higher order statistics. Here also we have applied it on each slice of the uh, subject's brain. And uh, then we get 11 features, which are then added to, uh, to uh, they're added to find 11 features across the slices for each of the four directions. Now for the, all the four directions, the, uh, these features are concatenated to find, to form the 1D vector. Here also, we have uh, used three different gray level gray levels, 8, 16, and 32. After carrying out feature extraction step, uh, step, we usually perform feature selection step in order to remove the redundant or irrelevant features without degrading the performance. In this model, we have used pressure discriminant ratio as the feature selector. Here it aims to find relevant features so that the mean value of the feature between the two different classes is high, whereas the variance among samples of the same class will be small. For classification, we have used support vector machine. The data set so obtained is divided into two segments, training and testing data. The training data is used to build the decision model, and the testing data is used for validation and testing. We have used leave one out cross validation scheme to validate the model. Features are incrementally included in order of relevance in building the decision model. The performance evaluation parameters used to evaluate the, uh, the methods are accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and F1 score. These are the experimental results. From these results, we can draw the conclusion that GLRLM H method performs the best for all the performance measures. This is given in bold here. Increase in the number of features improves the performance, but it fluctuates after a particular number of features. Among all the methods, GLGCM32 and GLCM32 have an implementing graph, thus being more stable. You can see from the graph. In general, GLCM, GLGCM, and GLRLM perform better than first order statistics as they consider neighborhood information that was not captured in the first order statistics. GLRLM performs better than all the methods because it captures higher order status. We cannot compare our results to previous methods due to lack in literature. So we can conclude that the diagnosis of SC12 using automated methods has become the need of the R. This work uses data consisting of structural images of 30 healthy and 30 SC12 patients. The performance was gauged via accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and F1 score. GLRLM8 performs uh, the best uh, because it uses higher order statistics, uh, which was not captured, uh, which was not used in the other three methods. In future, this work can be extended to, to 3D feature extraction methods where we can capture better neighborhood information to construct more relevant and minimal set of features. Thank you. These are the references. These are the appendix.